we are here today with Mr. Robbie Madison. Uh, Mr. Madison has been a long time, lifelong friend um, yes. since the early days. And yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome to have you today. My name is David Carter. I'm the Director of Education and Outreach, everyone, uh, for Charleston Jazz. Mr. Madison is a touring musician, a gigging musician, a music educator. We're going to learn a lot more about him and some tips and tricks for uh, aspiring musicians. Uh, let's go ahead and just dive in, Mr. Madison. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we have to say that we love you at the Academy. We love that you're one of our teachers. We're blessed to have you with us. So Thank you so much. It's <laughs> such a blessing to be a part, man. <laughs> Talk to me about your, your musical background, your journey. Where'd you come from? Talk to me about yeah. the music. Yeah. So um, part of the reason why I like, you know, I love being a part of the Jazz Academy, Charleston Jazz Academy, and and all the things I get to do here is because I grew up here. I'm from Charleston. Um, and I, from an early age, um, grew up with musical parents who were both uh, choir directors and uh, singers. And we had a recording studio and just lots of musical projects around me all the time. Um, so from that, I became really interested in music, and um, I used to I used to do visual art as well, um, but kind of gave up on that. <laughs> Just to focus on music. Music definitely went out for me. Um, I, in fifth grade, I auditioned for the Charleston School of the Arts, and I think that that was a pivotal time for me. Um, just being recognized for my art, and then also communicated to by the teachers throughout all those years that I was an artist, you know, and, and validating that. Um, it was super helpful and informative for me. Um, so growing up, I studied trumpet and voice and um, a little bit of piano in high school. Um, then I started diving into piano a little bit more in college. Um, so, you know, me and you met each other in high school as trumpet players. Mm -hmm. And we were both all state jazz trumpet players. And so it's something that we were able to share together and grow in that community. Um, so I think that that greatly impacted me, not only from just a diverse um, exposure to genres, from classical music to jazz music, gospel music, uh, all of that. But I started to just kind of find myself on my own. Um, as I went off to college and was away from family and, and friends and all the familiar things, I went off to Newberry College and I was, um, I was recruited there from the All State Jazz Festival my senior year. And um, I was recruited there as a soloist, um, a little shy Robbie <laughs> as a soloist. So um, from every ensemble from, from marching band, making me stand on a box and play solos mm -hmm. to to uh, the jazz band and uh, concert band and choir, everything. And so um, that to me was was um, was really important for me to have professors in a community that not only appreciated my art but affirmed it and gave it a place to be able to be shared and heard. Um, so you you know you kind of grow as an artist whenever you get that opportunity to have that safe place like that. So, well, you mentioned. Uh you mentioned going to Newberry. Aren't you currently in school now for music? I am. I am. Um, so I went to Newberry and I got an uh, undergrad, a bachelor's in performance. Um, my primary instrument was trumpet, secondary and piano. And then I have two minors. Um, one is in jazz studies where I did um, jazz voice and trumpet. And then um, another minor in Spanish as well. And so um, since graduating, I, I worked with um, a jazz foundation for a little bit and just like different organizations um, throughout the years to really just focus on performing. Um, and I've, I've been able to perform um, not, all over, not only over South Carolina, but different parts of the country and other countries and, and things like that. And um, I decided that I really wanted to get a master's degree. Um, so that way, later on down the line, um, once things kind of settle a little bit, I'll be able to focus a little bit more on teaching and really bringing up a younger generation of musicians and singers um, that are also just kind of growing in what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm working on my Master's of Arts in Teaching and Conducting at the College of Charleston. 
and um, about a little over halfway done with that. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you, man. Thank uh, you, friend. Talk, talk to me about your musical journeys now with uh, any projects that you have going on. I know you do stuff with church music, um, album releases, singles. Talk, talk to us yeah. about what you're doing, projects. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. So um, I moved back to Charleston four years ago, and that has been really wonderful for me, um, just to be back in my home hometown um, and to be an artistic contributor here. You know, it's just like, it's amazing um, to be a part of different festivals. I was um, able to do lots of projects with the Charleston Jazz um, um, Organization and um, and yeah, so I, I definitely have that side of me as well, but I am a worship leader and I'm a worship artist as well. Um, and so I, I work with Seacoast Church here in Charleston, doing different musical projects that are really just kind of focusing on, on the arts to help connect people spirit, with their spiritual walk. Um, so last year I released a project, my first full length CD of songs that I have written over the years, probably over the past 15 years, some of them are as old as 15 years and some of them are, are kind of newer. And um, I wanted it to be slightly representative of the current musicians that I work with now. So um, the musicians that played on the project, um, it was a, a small focused group of people that I play gigs with all the time. So we got um, Tim Kyatt that played bass for the project. And uh, he just recently graduated. Um, with his degree in jazz. I got Sean Monahan, who played all guitars on the project. He also produced the album. Um, Jonathan Lovett as well, uh, who is an incredible jazz pianist. He did all organs, pianos, synthesizers. Um, and Brandon Brooks played um, drums on the project. Phenomenal drummer and friend um, of mine. Mike Quinn actually was able to play on one of the tracks um, as well and a slew of other musicians. And so um, this particular project is definitely faith-based, but it has different genres of music that's featured throughout. Um, the first song is like 80s rock, you know? <laughs> so, and then uh, it kind of goes into some CCM, um, a little bit R&B vibes. Um, I've got a song that's just straight jazz interpretation of an old hymn uh, called How Great You Are. Um, it's based on how great thou art. Um, and yeah, so that's been a wonderful project. Um, that I am proud to have been able to make. Um, and then I've released a few seat singles as well. Uh, there's an, a little pop tune I created a few years ago I wrote for my wife. It's called Sometimes I Forget. Um, and I released that um, two years ago on Valentine's Day. Um, I've done lots of collaborations with Seacoast, um, another rapper named Connor Flanagan, you know, different things like that. But um, I'm going to release here soon. You were the first to hear this, but uh, <laughs> I'm going uh -oh, to release. Exclusive, <laughs> exclusive. Let's hear it. I wrote a tune <laughs> called um, Crank It Up. And it is a, a tune I wrote for a friend of mine. I should not be sharing all this, but you, you will be the first to hear. Um, it's for a friend of mine who shares the same name as me. His name is Robbie Madison. <laughs> And he is a famous motorcyclist. Um, and um, we just shared some things in common. And one of the things we shared in common is that we like to inspire people to go for their dreams. And so this song is a song that is, it's like a rock kind of inspirational song that um, I wrote with him in mind um, that we'll release, release later. I'm just working on artwork and a, a PR plan and all of that. Um, but I'm excited about it. I really, I really enjoy it. It's, it's finished. Um, so I might send it to you after this. <laughs> yes. We want to check it out. Well, sure. that, that leads me to a, another question of just how do we keep in contact with you? I have a couple more questions, but if people yeah. were to check this album out or check out uh, the single, crank it out, you know, crank it up. Is that, is that? Right? Yeah. Crank it up. Crank it up. <laughs> I, it makes sense. Motorcycle. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, how, how do people find you uh, either on social media or online? Yeah. So I am pretty active on Instagram. Um, so I usually try to push people there first prim primarily. Um, my Instagram handle is Robbie Madison music, R O B B I E M A D I S O N 
music. Um, and Madison has one D because my alias has two Ds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the motorcyclist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram. Um, also, I'm the same on Facebook. I have an artist page on Facebook. Um, and I have a YouTube channel as well. And it, everything is the same, Robbie Madison Music. Um, and my, my website is robbymadison.com. Simple, simple. Yeah. I'll make sure we'll uh, post that information at the bottom of the description link. Uh, Thank you. Afterwards, Thank you. for sure, for sure. Uh, love catching up and, and hearing yeah. some of the great things you're doing. So at the Charleston Jazz Academy, we, again, value you so much. And we want your feedback. Give us some tips, tricks, suggestions, thoughts that could help out aspiring musicians. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know how it is. Um, just really going for it, going for your dreams. It's not what you think about exactly when you were 18. <laughs> There's a lot of hard work um, that has to go behind fueling those dreams, you know. And so if I were to speak to a younger self, I would just say, really focus on, um, on your craft, everything that you can do to to strengthen what you can do technically, um, all that's going to do is help you be able to express yourself the way that you want to express yourself. And so sometimes we can lose vision behind why we play scales and why we, um, why we learn technique, um, but it helps us. It helps to, when the song comes out, to put words and vocabulary to it. Um, so lean into everything that teachers are te teaching you, number one. Um, learn as much about yourself as possible and how that can relate to your art um, as well. And um, be confident in your expression. Um, I actually, I don't know if you remember when Alan Vizzuti, um came as a guest artist for a jazz festival. I do. Um, that, was, that was kind of a gift to me from Mr. Long. <laughs> I was getting him there and I got to spend so much time with him and just pick his brain and, and um, I mean, he gave me, the, I asked him, I was like, what do I do when I graduate? You know, he was like, find what you love to do and then find someone who will invest for you to do that, you know? And I needed somebody to simplify things because the world can be so big. Um, but I think that the piece that we miss is find what we love to do. What do you love to do? And spend time doing it. Um, I think I, I could fall into the trap um, of wanting to reach the most amount of people because of this age of like, social media and reality shows that reality shows that aren't really reality, you know? Um, but the reality is that there are people that value your gift and that those are the people that you should make art for, whether it's five people, 20 people, a thousand people, whatever, like value those people um, because they, they bring out, they, they get what you're doing. They get your artwork. And so, yeah. Oh, you have to put in. Uh, yes investment in order to get it back out so yeah true, yep. true 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 my last question for you mr madison is uh, talk to me about some of the folks that have inspired you musically whether that's from a classical point of view or, or a contemporary christian point of view or just uh, in general what are some yeah. things, you know that have inspired you who are some of those folks i will try to keep it simple because i feel like there's so many inspirations <laughs> Um, the first one that came to mind for me um, was obviously Mr. Kerr. Uh, he was, um, Basil Kerr is a legend in Charleston. Um, he was the band director at Charleston School of the Arts. And um, I think that he was one of the first people to recognize me, you know, as an artist and to recognize my talent and to push me. Um, he was the one that put me in jazz band, you know. Um, he was the one that recognize that I had a natural ability to do these things and fostered that. And I get the opportunity to still work with him today. Um, he's the conductor of the community band and he brings me along as a, as a vocalist, a featured vocalist with them for different projects now. And it's just been wonderful. Um, my trumpet teacher in high school, his name was Brian Osborne. Did you know him? I didn't know Brian. No, Brian Osborne. He was um, one of the trumpet players of the Charleston Symphony for a few years mm -hmm. while he was here. I think now he's in Florida teaching trumpet. But I would say the same thing for him, but on a more personal level. Like he was the first one who really like called out my ability on trumpet. Um, I did not really believe in myself back then, and so um, he, man. 
I don't know what he did, but it really validated me. It really brought out something. And I just started practicing so much. I started practicing so much. And, um, and he would tell me how amazing I sounded. And I told him, I was like, you don't have to say that. <laughs> you know? And he's like, no, I'm serious. You know, and, and um, I, I literally remember comparing myself to Todd, one of our great friends who mm-hmm. I just respect and love so much. And, um, and he was, he, uh, Todd, Brian taught Todd as well. And he just nurtured and fostered us so well that I still remember that today. Like this is literally, I mean, almost 20 years later. Um, and um, Mr. Long at, um, at Newberry as well, band director there. Like so many teachers for me. Uh, artistically, that, I mean, that can be a long list, but I'll just say um, I listened to a lot of Take Six growing up. Um, six Part Harmony. Um, just incredible vocals, um, uh, boys to men, of course, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and a lot of the dynamic soloists back in the day, you know, so Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, like Brian McKnight, um, Stevie Wonder, oh my gosh, like his writing, I really love his writing, Richard Smallwood, like just the list can really go on for me, um, but um, it's very, it's very just kind of eclectic for me, but I really, really think that my biggest direct inspirations uh, are family and teachers. Like, uh, that's, that's part of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing today, too, is because teachers have such an impact. They can really help shape a human into better parts of themselves. So, yeah. That's a beautiful list of folks and a beautiful <laughs> list. Uh, very, very well said. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for taking time to chat with us today. Absolutely. A lot of great things that you said, and I can't wait to share this with our community. So Thank you so much. Hey. So good to talk to you. Likewise. Hopefully we'll see you <laughs> face-to-face soon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I really I hope this moves along quickly. Right, <laughs> I miss right. everybody. But safely, but safely, you know? So, yes, safely. Hey. Well, thanks, and <laughs> Tell your family hello, and again, we appreciate you so much. And thanks for likewise. See you soon. See you, David.